right, we ready? Yeah, get it. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Friday and episode 23 of Camping Corner. Whew, this is working good at this. I know. You're stuck with your usual hosts again, Mallory and Tony. Last last week, you almost had a guest host. You did. You did. One of the two of <laughs> us was uh, preoccupied. <laughs> it was Tony. But <laughs> it was me. But hello, America. Thanks for tuning in again. Yes, thank you. So I guess we'll kick it right off with what's the buzz. Uh, first off, what's the buzz is next week. Don't forget, what's next week? What are we doing next week? It's a live. first. We are doing live. Live. The sad thing is we just talked about it and I had to think about it. <laughs> We're doing it live <laughs> from the campground. It'll be fun. I'm excited. All, All right, right let, so let's get what's the buzz. Yes. So today we're going to go over the top five questions that we get asked, which is really great. So we'll kick it off with number one, what type of RV would work for me? So this is definitely different for every individual, right? Sure. Whether you need bunks, you don't need bunks, all of that. So the great thing is here at Walnut Ridge, we love to sit down with people and kind of get an idea of what you're looking for. How many people do you need it to sleep? what's the functionality you need out of your RV. So I think we do a really great job of trying to help people figure out what type of RV would work for them. Absolutely. Yeah. Another big question is what type of campers are there? Mm -hmm. So we hear the question, we call them travel trailers. Some people call them bumper poles or tow behinds. You know, so there are a lot of different slang words that go into that, but Traditionally, your most common is going to be a Class B, which is a van conversion. It will still continue to look like a van. A B plus, which kind of looks like a small Class C, a little bigger than a B, not quite as big as a C. Then you have a, a Class C, which is a cutaway chassis that has a van front end, typically a Ford or a Chevy front end. And then class A looks like a loaf of bread with wheels yeah. or a bus. Yep. Uh, and then travel trailers or with, with your towable units, of course, you have fold downs or pop up tent campers. Mm -hmm. You have travel trailers. You have hybrids that look like a travel trailer with the fold out canvas bunk ends, mm -hmm. like you find on a tent camper. Then you have fifth wheels. Yep. So there's quite a few. And it can get confusing pretty fast if it you're can. new to all of it. Um, another thing is how do you know what your tow, your tow vehicle can handle? There's a few different ways, obviously, and we have a guide that we'll kind of show here in a little bit too. But we have a tow guide that we can use just getting a little bit more information about your tow vehicle. You can also say you've got a Ford, Dodge, or Chevy. Reach out to your local dealership with your VIN number. They can also help you kind of drill in more as to what you can tow. Do I need RV insurance? Yes, you do. <laughs> and it's actually more minimal than people think. Yes. So yes. it's not crazy. One of the things that, that I think people forget about is RV insurance is written along the same lines as motorcycle insurance. So during camping season, that coverage ramps up. Mm -hmm. But during the off season, it comes down. There obviously is less opportunity for something to happen to your camper if it's parked in a store at a storage lot or at a campground or just in your driveway and it's 12 below zero. Mm -hmm. Unless you're towing it, there's less opportunity for things to happen. So right. lots of great insurance options out there from national companies to your local insurance. So always check on your insurance before you go shopping. Yep. Where do I get service and what are the costs of owning an RV? So obviously we have a great service department here. A lot of dealerships have service departments if you're not local to us. Um, and then costs of owning an RV, it's just like any other vehicle. There's going to be yearly maintenance you have to do. Get up on the roof, check those seals, check your slide outs. So that's what I compare it to is it's just like your car. Your car needs an oil change. It needs maintenance. A camper is no different. It's going to need maintenance. So there's different costs that can go in there as well. But the most important thing about maintenance and upkeep on an RV, 
cost wise nobody's really figured out how to measure smiles per miles <laughs> so if you're having a great time with your family and you're getting out and you're doing some of the stuff you're reconnecting with nature rediscovering the back roads rediscovering some of the small towns and and things like that you can't put a you, you really can't put a price on it and it's much still much cheaper than staying in a hotel exactly yep plus you got your own bed your own silverware your own bathroom you just can't beat it. So the next thing we're going to talk about is RV slang, because there's a lot of it, and you <laughs> even mentioned some with travel trailers with right. your bumper pull, pull behind. We hear all kinds of terms for it. <clears throat> so one of us will kind of read. We'll go back and forth, read a term, and we'll see if we know what they are. So toad or dinghy. <laughs> it's the, the little vehicle that you pull behind a motorhome. Yep. I always love when they put the little signs on the back of them that'll say something like, slow down, I'm pushing this big motor home, or, you know, something <laughs> like that. You know, you'll see those on the on the road. It's, it's just kind of comical. <laughs> a, a smart car right behind a 45-foot diesel pusher. Right. You know, I'm pushing it. <laughs> Basement. Basement is the storage underneath. I mainly hear this when referring to motorhomes, but I hear it a lot during fifth wheels too, like that under storage, that under compartment. I don't necessarily hear it a lot on travel trailers. Yep. Motorhomes is probably definitely where I hear it the most. Yeah. All right. Stinky slinky. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually one of my favorite. That that's one of my favorite ones. Cause let's face it. <laughs> Nobody really wants to have a conversation about poo. <laughs> right. So <laughs> even when you're talking to, you know, as long as I've been in the RV industry, even talking to someone new about what they're going to get into with their RV and explaining freshwater tanks and gray water tanks and black water tanks, you can just see the uncomfortable shift when you start going, well, okay, so this is the sewage. But yeah, stinky slinky. Is, that's your sewer hose. The lovely sewer hose. <laughs> Chucking. Ooh, this is the uncomfortable, like, when you're jerking back and forth. Like, let's say, for instance, you have a travel trailer and you don't want a sway bar on that sucker. You're going to experience a lot yeah. of chucking. <laughs> It'll be a very uncomfortable ride. <laughs> yeah. Or the unfortunate times that you get, and, and a lot of times it's in a concrete on a concrete roadway mm -hmm. because they put the expansion joints, the anti-freeze joints so every so often, and you'll get at the perfect speed that you'll get the truck and the trailer in between them. And you're, it seems like for miles you're going, Woo! <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, it's like riding a bull. Yeah. Pretty awful. yeah. Get it, Mabel. <laughs> oh goodness. A uh, bat wing. A bat wing. What's a bat wing, Tony? Uh, that's the TV antenna up on top. Yes, it is. Looks like a boomerang. It does. Yeah. We get asked that a lot. What is that? What's that thing right there? <laughs> it's a bat wing. Pusher. You, we get this a lot. Do you have any diesel pushers? Yeah. It's a motorhome. Yeah. A diesel motorhome. <laughs> I don't call it. I don't, this one, I do not call that. But a blue boy. Oh, is this that tote, that portable tote that you can drain your tanks into yeah. at the campground? Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's funnier. I use the term honey wagon. It's, okay. it, that's the honey wagon. Yeah. And people, what's that? And you explain it because, again, nobody wants to have the discussion about poo. Yeah, see, I don't call it a blue boy. I call it something else, but it's not appropriate for our show. Yeah. But, you know, you'll hear people talk about it being the portable poo tank or, yeah. you know, there's there's a lot of different words for that. But I think a lot of people and a lot of the campgrounds call them honey wagons. That yeah. tends to be the, I think, the more accepted term. Uh, fiber. Fiber. I'm a fiber. This is used to refer to a fifth wheel. I really have never you're a, this. You're a fiber. I, I am. I have a fifth wheel. I'm a fiber. But I've never really heard this one before. Yeah. So that one's kind of a new one for me. Yep. I'm a full timer. I'm a fiver. That it's always that term has always to me kind of felt like when people use that term, it's almost like it's a stat. They use it as a status symbol. Oh, we're we're a fiver. Right. Fiver. <laughs> right. Really? I'm a fold down. How about that? Get on that there, Fold Edward. Down. How about that? <laughs> 
we're full time at it. Oh my god. In our goodness. ten foot box. The hula skirt. Uh, also known as a uh, like a dust skirt or a dust ruffle. There's a whole that's another one that there's a whole bunch of little terms for. But you see that little skirty thing on the back of a motorhome? Yeah. Uh, that's supposed to be keeping rocks from kicking up and hitting the dinghy or just you because you're driving behind them. See, I didn't know that one. Yes. That's the hula skirt. Wally Doc. I do know this one. It's when you stay in the Walmart parking lot. World's largest campground, baby. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing three nights. Three nights, four days in the luxurious Walmart in Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> Boondocking. Or dry camping. Or dry camping. That that kind of gives it away with dry right. camping. It does. It means when you're just probably hooked up to a generator, you've got you're out in the middle of nowhere. Just enjoying life. Or hooked up to a Jenny. A Jenny. Oh see, yeah. Look at that. Throwing in another slang term. Snowbirds. This is really no different in the R V industry than it is in, in everyday lingo. Yeah. People that take their RV south for the winter. Yep. Long about October, and they start thinking, ooh, it's going to start getting cold. <laughs> Vernon, load up the car. We're headed. <laughs> every customer we have or every interaction Tony has ever had has been somebody from the deep south. Right. right. Every Everybody. one of them. <laughs> Every single person you've ever encountered in your life is from the Deep South. That's Everyone. Right. That's Well, all my people are from the Deep South. Like, no matter what. If you went to the gas station, if you went to the car dealership, if you went to the B&B, <laughs> they were from the Deep South. And you live in Indiana. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, so, so what sounds better? Vernon, load up the car. Or, Vernon, load up the car. He's got a valid point there. Oh, there was no judgment in that. Yeah. That was just a statement. Yeah, he was just you, pointing it out. Yeah, there's no there's judgment-free zone in here. And everybody has to have a different voice. Even, I'm, I, my wife laughs at me because I make the dogs, like the dogs will do something and I, I, I have to give them a voice of what they're saying. Mm -hmm. And it has to come with some sort of voice and and it usually is in the south, from the south. Yeah. <laughs> I'll admit it. So the next section is kind of what we were talking about with the tow vehicles. So these are kind of, you know, we've had Dan has created these up, tow guides that kind of show what sort of vehicle can tow what sort of camper. Yep. The Clipper 12.0 mm -hmm. uh, TD weighs 1,290 pounds. So that would be accessible to be towed by a Jeep Wrangler, which most of them are 2,500 mm -hmm. Uh, with a maximum of 3,500 pounds of towing capacity. Of course, your things like the Chevy Equinox, the Ford Escape, Honda Odyssey, things like that are going to have you know that 2,500 to 3,500 pounds of towing capacity. Right. Please know, uh, see the fine print that's not below, but you could imagine it that this is not a complete list of right. all the vehicles that could tow that. Right. I mean, realistically, it weighs 1,290 pounds, and if you've got a F 450 crew cab, flatbed, headache rack, ranch king, diesel, all the stuff on it. You could pull a 12. You know, you could still pull a 12. <laughs> We'd let you. We'd let you. <laughs> so yeah, and then you know next you've got the Ozark 1650 coming in at 3,200 pounds. So just a few examples: Ford Expedition, Chevy Tahoe, Chevy Suburban, your F-150. So you get into a little bit bigger of your SUVs and trucks, but. Yes. And then, of course, you've got your 6,000 pounds and under, like the world's most popular floor plan at Walnut Ridge Family RV Sales right now, the Hideout 272 LHS. So you could pull that with a Jeep Cherokee or maybe a Dodge Durango. Is that better, Dan? You like that better? Do you like that voice better? I do, actually. It was a nice change. Or the Silverado 50. Pardon me, do you have any gray poupon? Do you carry gray poupon in your camper? Nope, Frenches. Plain old Frenches, baby. It's just funny that you assumed a, like a high-class voice when you talked about a Jeep Cherokee. 
I mean, I don't think like extreme, like Jeep Cherokees are nice, but I don't think that it's not a, like a Mercedes. Oh, let's, let's offend some of our clientele, Dan. No, 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 there, there's no offending here. It's just you associated the Jeep Cherokee with high luxury. With Grey Poupon. With Grey Poupon. <laughs> which no, I found. It, no, it was camper, it was anything that could pull something, you know, around 6,000 okay. pounds. all right, all right, yeah. all right. And then if you get to the F450 crew cab, flatbed, headache rack, ranch king, super edition, all that great stuff, that's a whole nother, that's, that's just a whole nother realm of language right there. <laughs> uh, so the next one, you've got your Outback 291 at UBH at 6,601 pounds. So examples are Silverado 1500. Dodge Durango, F-150 again, Sierra 1500, so yeah. And then, of course, the 8,000 pounds and over in the Cougar, and the most the, the best part about this whole thing is the fact that with a heartbeat of America, with, with the bow tie, with the General Motors, you can have a half-ton truck, but if you're pulling it with a Ford or, or a Dodge Ram, you got to go to the three-quarter ton. Actually, it just depends on the year of the Ford, so I kind of kept in general, but whatever. That's right. <laughs> you printed it. That's the proof. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so while they bicker about what can tow what, we found a picture with an awesome tow vehicle. We have to share it. <laughs> <laughs> this little Tykes car. It is a major towing machine. Apparently, it can tow this passport. Yep, David. David, <laughs> David Burden sent that in to us. That's an awesome picture. Absolutely cute. Yes. Thank you, David. We love it. Someone I think commented, powered by alternating two and three year olds. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, that's that's super cute. I love that. Oh goodness. So pictures that takes us to our next segment around the interwebs and it's funny because this first one here I shared with my husband the other day and it wasn't even off of the Walnut Ridge page that I shared it to him because he would have seen it he watches the Walnut Ridge page and I sent it to him and he loves it like this this is us camping <laughs> it, it doesn't matter what time of day it is yeah. you're allowed to crack we, open a beer we should really eat breakfast before we start drink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's it yep I'm awake. I'm awake. The beer's cold. Yes. And it's Will Ferrell, so that just makes <laughs> it funnier. There are two things that test a marriage. Having kids and parking or backing a trailer. Amen. And we've talked about that before, too. It truly does. I feel like parking or backing a trailer probably tests your marriage more than the kids sometimes. <laughs> It, it could, I mean, yeah, it could. That's a that can be a, a rough situation. I definitely remember the next one. That happened several hundred thousand times in my childhood growing up. When your dad turns off the radio and <laughs> does this while backing the trailer up, it's time for you to be quiet and not make eye contact until the cussing stops. Yes. Yes. This was my grandpa on his boat. See, we didn't have campers growing up, but this was my grandpa on his boat. So, yeah, definitely have been there before. Okay. <laughs> you know, speaking of boats, we, I know we have lots of we have lots of clients that have boats, mm -hmm. and we laugh and joke about sitting at the campground and watching people pull in and the comical things that can happen. The same thing happens at the boat ramp when they're launching. Or when they're pulling, trying to pull the boat out of the water. We should have, even though it's not camping related, did, did, did you guys happen to see on the internet, here in Indiana, the guy trying to keep the $400,000 speedboat from getting swamped? No. Tried to get it out with a Ford Raptor and ended up sinking the Ford Raptor and then some other, so altogether, the $429,000 speedboat, 
the eighty thousand dollar pickup truck and then like another sixty or seventy thousand dollar truck trying to get it all out of the water all of it ruined sunk here oh, in Indiana. probably cried a little on that one oh, a lot. could you imagine the the if you were if, if you had if you were the sensor that had to hit the little beat button <laughs> <trying> to, <laughs> you got carpal tunnel just from that no. that case right there. <laughs> Uh, speaking of foul language, we were gonna we were gonna show this video, uh, and I know a lot of people have seen it. The deer that somehow made it amazingly in between the towed vehicle, the truck, mm -hmm. or whatever they're towing it with, and the front of the trailer, and dented the whole front of that camper. We were gonna show that video to you, but you have to search it out on your own because it has colorful language that are not pleasant for all ears. Probably anybody would use in that situation, but we can't. <laughs> yes. Drum roll. It's time. For what the what? For what the what? I love this segment now. <laughs> I catch myself trying to look at just stupid stuff on <laughs> on the interwebs, and I, 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 I say that all the time now. What the what? What the what? Or look at you looking like you look at... Oh, goodness. The first picture. The swimming pool RV. I mean, you can't... Is this just is this just all swimming pool? You can't really have much of an RV there underneath. Like, I feel like it's just got to be... I mean, she's already standing in, and it's, like, up to her chest. So it's got to be not a lot of RV. This is, like, all pool. So what kind of nasty stuff has to be in the lake or pond right next to them that you felt it was necessary to turn your camper into a swimming pool so you didn't have to swim in that. Maybe they got gators or... Could be in Florida, you never know. And it's cute that they think they could can tow that with all that water in there and... With that little... That little thing right up there. My favorite part of all of this is the bucket of water that they step into so that you don't get like grass <laughs> and all the other stuff in the pool when you get in. I mean, we, we can't redneck it up that much. Yeah, we can't I mean, have like, they wanted grass floating in our pool. They, they wanted to be classy, you know, like they didn't want any grass in there. But they do have their little net thing on the side, see? Yeah. Yep. Yep, so they can clean the any grass that makes it up there. Yep. <laughs> yeah, but you have to, like, dump this thing out. You can't travel down the road with all that water in it. A few miles down the road, it'd be empty. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm, yeah. You could. You would lose some water. <laughs> but being the redneck that I am, I have seen my fair share of pickup trucks with blue tarps in the back, full of water, <laughs> coolers floating, <laughs> yahoos hanging out the side. Woo! You know, but I guess while some pools are, like, still closed or they're only open part-time right now, this may not be a bad That's idea. Right. <laughs> They said I couldn't go swimming. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> Hold my beer. See, that sounded much better than, uh, pardon me, you <laughs> tell me I can't go to a public pool? Watch this. <laughs> I actually enjoyed the second version of that. <laughs> I feel like that's how they said it. That was a very classy RV pool. The next one, there are not even words to describe. Did they did they drive through a dump and like everything just stuck in a cubic lake? It's like a junk magnet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to a swap beat. There's I, no way that goes down the road. No, no way. No, no, for multiple reasons. All the stuff already on it, and then you'd have to clear all the crap out of the window to even try to go somewhere. Beanie like beanie babies. <laughs> you, see, you see the people driving down the road with all the beanie babies on the front dash. I can't even, I, I can't handle even like air fresheners hanging from my, my rear view mirror. I can't, I can't handle any of that stuff. Just because it's like, it bothers you that it's there? It, yes, it bothers me. It bothers I can me. see that. It does. But. <laughs> well, then this would really drive you crazy. That is super cool. Oh, an atomic camper. I love the creativity here. That is 
I only know two people that wouldn't think that was cool. What two people? I can't. I, I don't want to name them. Oh, okay. But so I they do. were specific people. Oh, yeah. Not like I, yeah, I know two people that would look at that and go, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. I don't know why you'd spend all that money doing that. <laughs> but that is, you got to admit, that is that is super cool. Yeah. And when you pulled into the campground, everybody, not only would they be watching, but they would all be at your campsite yeah. in moments. Asking you tons of questions. Can I take a look at that? Yeah. What's the inside look like? Because, I mean, I'm curious. Or they might say, may I come in and look at your camper? May I come in and look at your <laughs> atomic camper? And have some camper? Grey Poupon. <laughs> what, <laughs> is, what is this? <laughs> there's got to be, like, there's a bed in there and that's it. But he is very, he looks very proud. Yes. Of his tiny home on the back of his, yes. what is this, like a... Prius. Prius, yeah. Yes. <laughs> And inside that, he's carrying his participation trophies. <laughs> I also, I also like the piece of wood across the door. Does that like prevent it from opening as yep. you go down the road? But he does have the yellow ratchet strap, and he, even he said it. <laughs> That's not going anywhere. <laughs> he's got a dream catcher wind chime. Okay, that's why I was like, is that a dream catcher or a wind chime? Hanging from by the door. Decor. It's all about the decor. It really brings out the rusty roof. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. It's time for Caption This. Caption This. So I posted this last week. I had some great comments. I didn't share with you guys, so I want to get your guys' take on this. Let's see if you guys, since you probably didn't see it, let's see if you guys, I imagine Tony's going to go a similar direction to what most of the people did. So at first observation, camouflage shorts, cut off sleeve t-shirt. <laughs> Next to him, I'm guessing is cut off or blue jean shorts I'm going with, with the Leatherman in the belt and cut off sleeve t-shirts. And most certainly a Dale Earnhardt hat. If you could see the front of that hat, that is a black hat with a red bill and a number three on it. <laughs> Which, don't get me wrong, I, I love some Dale Earnhardt. But the only place I could go would, would, would it, that would take one of my southern accents. A strong one at that. Um, and then that's a that is a Chevrolet truck, by the way, with the ratchet strap holding the rest of the stuff on it. Or a GM. That's a GM truck. Heartbeat of America, right there. Um, caption this. <laughs> well, I reckon we can change all four tires at the same time. <laughs> I feel like this is truly a situation where the, you know. The spouses, the significant others were like, you're not going to make it through the trees. And they're like, watch this. I've got this. You know, if we could just get it up on top of these poles right here, not only could we camp, but we could hunt out of it. There it is. There, <laughs> there it was. I was waiting on it. The other, the other top one uh, had to do with finally getting the black tank empty. <laughs> Oh, I like your hunting one. That one for yeah. sure. But if even if you did that, if you picked it up and tilted it to the back to get the black tank empty, the monitor panel is still going to say that it's three quarters of the way full. <laughs> <laughs> RV, the the biggest pain in the butt in the RV industry. You can put a brand new black tank in your camper, brand new, never had anything in it. Hit the button, half full. What? <laughs> But you know, you quickly, talking about that, like, I've been an RV owner for multiple years, you guys both own RVs, you just get a sense for, with your freshwater tank, your gray tank, and your black tank, like, and I'm not even talking smell, like, you just, after a day or so, you're like, oh, it's got to be about time to empty the gray water tank, or oh, I got to empty right. the, the black tank, you right. know, go to Taco Bell, you have to empty it sooner, you know? <laughs> All right, my favorite segment. You guys love What the What. I love it too. But my favorite segment, who's, who sold it better? 
So last week, Tony got to pick who goes first. This week, Mallory gets to pick who goes first. Okay. So it's either you're going first or Tony's going first. I'll go first this week. Okay, so you get to pick one or two. What's my damage going to be? Great. <laughs> Gray Poupon <laughs> or little mustard packets stolen from the last fast food restaurant that you went in. That's about a really good analogy for these campers that we've been getting lately. All right, I think I am going to go two. So I'm not I'm not going to look at number one. I'm just going to look at number that's two. That's number see. one there that you're looking at. Or no, that's number two. You're, you right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're you right. Tony, I almost messed you up. Oh, you. Oh, this thing is gorgeous. Oh, this thing is nice. This is a really nice, sleek motorhome. Even the paint job on the outside. So, as you can see, Mallory got gray Poupon. <laughs> I don't even know that I really need to talk that much to sell this thing. The outside is just gorgeous. So, she got gray Poupon and you're going to get pooped on? Pooped is, that, <laughs> is that what we're going with? Yeah, well, I'm getting the mustard packets from the... the out of your glove compartment. <laughs> All right, Mallory, sell it to us. This is a well-maintained motorhome, you guys. Somebody that's had this has taken care of a classic for you. You're not going to find something like this in this grade of condition. So definitely, this is something anybody would want if you want a classic motorhome. It's vintage. It's the vintage. Even with the nice vintage, like blue and white coloring. You know? I want to see the interior. I couldn't find a picture of the interior. It, right. it would be nice to see. Right. That may have a turd burner in it. It may very well. What's a turd burner? So, there, before the EPA said, eh, it's probably not a really good idea, there used to be this system for RV toilets called turd burners. Oh, no. And <laughs> it would literally... A, Above the exhaust system uh -huh. was this little pan, this little tray, and you would flush the toilet. And go into that tray? And it would land in the tray, and then the heat from that, from the exhaust and that pan would burn up the... Wouldn't that stink? The waste. Well, there are companies, there are, now they make, uh, there are companies that make emulsifying toilets that actually have internally inside the, the toilet have a little metal basket that when you flush the toilet the liquid goes through a mesh basket but the solids land in the basket and then every so often it sends an electric current to that and does the same thing mm. and, that, and you can buy those today okay all right so you got the vintage gray poupon <laughs> Yours every week has plywood somewhere blocking. Yes. Yes. Well, first off, it could be a crime scene. Maybe that's what the tarps <laughs> are for. So, CSI Your Town popped up, and you know, to cover up the scene of the crime, so you couldn't look in, they put it. Put a tarp over the front of it. You're not making me want to buy it right now. I mean... Oh, you actually want to buy it? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, it's got a shatterproof windshield covering. <laughs> We've got a wheel chalk down here, but just to make sure, this has got quick-release hubs so you can take the wheels <laughs> off. That is the best anti-theft device that you could possibly get. If you'll notice, it does have not one... Well... We're assuming that it has a, an entry door on the other side, but there's also a door up here at the front, so in emergency situations, you can evacuate the premises as quickly as possible. <laughs> uh, you also have the plywood, and the plywood is hinged, so you can open that up for ventilation, but then you can close it for <laughs> privacy. So even if your campground is in the worst of neighborhoods, you and your camping, your camping family can rest assured that you are going to be able to camp in the safety of wherever. So come on down and buy Bargain Betty over here. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. I don't, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I, I, I think I, I want to buy it. 
great job. Mainly just for the shatterproof windshield covering. <laughs> <laughs> or is it shatterproof because there's probably no windshield under there anyway? Hey, don't <laughs> don't mess up my mojo trying to you sell my. You get a my... nice breeze. Yeah. If you're if you like convertibles, or you're a Jeep driver with everything you know all the sides taken off, this is the motorhome for you. It looks like it has the AC still on top. <laughs> well, that's good. It could. And it's got a license plate on it. <laughs> Almost looks like a California plate. This is probably sitting in like an LA neighborhood somewhere. <laughs> Don't be offensive to our viewers. <laughs> People know there's there's rough parts of LA. <laughs> like Gary, Indiana. There's, it can get some, it can get rough. Okay, <laughs> like this is not a secret. Ah, <laughs> oh, poor Tony. Maybe one week. Just once. <laughs> Just once. I think there's a conspiracy. <laughs> what? No. I'll figure out the, I'll figure out the, 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 the method to the madness on the numbers. One or two. It's probably some alternating. Every other week, it's, you know, <laughs> they flip them back and forth. Oh, I don't mind getting the junk the, the junk ones. That's because they're fun to look at. They mean, are fun. That's all part of the what, what you know, what to what. They are fun. What to what. <laughs> but, hey, I think. That is episode 23. That's it. Stick a fork in it. This episode's is done. Done. D U N. Done. Next week we'll be live. So you live. Can see all of our live shenanigans. We're live. It's really not much different than what you get recorded. I promise. You'll get to see that for sure. We're gonna have guests. Yes. They do not know they're gonna be guests. That's the fun part, right? Surprise. There are gonna be people at the campground. Because of Fourth of July weekend. So there'll be a ton of people there. I say not only do we do it live, but we get our guests by just rolling up on the golf cart to the campground and saying, you know, hey, introduce. No, no, whoa, 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 pump the brakes. We're, we're the complexity levels a little out of control here, Tony, <laughs> Mr. Prima Donna. I've agreed to a remote location, not locations. I, no, no, we don't have to move. I just mean we just show up We because we said that we would do it live from the campground. Yeah. Okay, so that's our remote location live, but we want to have guests too, so let's just show up at somebody's campsite and do the episode at somebody's campsite. Yeah, but you're forgetting that I'm going to have the TV up there so yeah, the he's viewers got too much of a can setup. see the Put, stuff that you're seeing. They'll have electricity to hook it up? I'm not pulling a TV around to each location and my computer. We're only going to one location. I thought we were doing it from like Yours. your patio. But it would be easier to get guests if we just show up and say, hey, you're going to be a guest on our show and we're going to do the episode right here. So or we just find a guest and take them to your campsite. Are we going to yell at them from across the park? No, we go get them before yo, we yo, start. Yo, yo, hey! We go get them before we even start. I don't see it going well. Just us rolling up in the Walnut Ridge van with the TV, computer, 3D, a camera, <laughs> and going, hey, guess what? It's a nice neighborhood. Nobody will think anything about you're it. You're here to relax, but now you're going to be on a live TV show that you knew nothing about. Okay, so, I, okay. So we'll do it. We'll do it from our our camper, and we'll get our guests. We'll 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 figure out our guests. Uh-huh. We're gonna need a ice one ice cold beer can, C A N, can, and a fishing pole, and that's how we'll get our guests. We'll tie we tie the beer <laughs> tie the beer can to, to the fishing pole. Throw it out there. Let her rip and see who follows it. <laughs> Maybe we could get <laughs> Charlie to post something on the Walnut Ridge Campgrounds Facebook to say if you would entertain the idea of coming over. So we'll be shooting live on Friday. Maybe we could have a studio audience. Ooh. Talk about complexity. No, that that's no more work on me. That's just Because they're all just going to be sitting do. in the grass. <laughs> like, bring, bring your lawn chairs. <laughs> we could shoot a pavilion and we could have a studio guest. Or... We a studio audience. 
you know with our luck it's going to be pouring down rain next Friday when we do this live right all the more reason to do it under the awning up there we'll get it all worked out uh, we can figure it out yep all right we could do it at the. We could do. You know, there's so. There are so many remote locations we could do from the campground. We could do it from my camper. We can do it from Dan's camper. We could do it from the miniature golf course. And talk real soft. We're coming to you today <laughs> from the Walnut Ridge Miniature Golf Course. Why there's a five-year-old in the background playing miniature golf? <laughs> he's he's about to hit the putt of a lifetime. It, it cracks me up when you wa- when you watch golf, because you know the announcers are either in the studio, or they're at the top of one of those towers, like three thousand feet above, you know, the scaffolding tower. They're three hundred feet above it, but they're still talking like this. <laughs> Here's Dan. He's got a sixteen footer to sink for a million dollars. I'd miss it. <laughs> All right. Anyway. That's episode it. 23. Episode 23. Episode 24 live. It'll be fun. I'm excited. Whoop, whoop. Whoop. We need confetti, pyrotechnics. Well, everybody. Has we know it. where there's pyrotechnics. We know where we can get some pyrotechnics. That is true. That is true. That's true. All right. You ready? That's it. See everybody next week. See ya.